While the population of Muslim immigrants is growing rapidly in traditionally Christian and secular countries, while at the same time the resident populations are either stagnant or declining, and together it is creating a global expansion of Islam. University professor and author Barry Van explains it all in his new book, Puritan Islam, the Geo-Expansion of the Muslim World. And Dr. Van joins me now on set. Welcome. Thanks. I'm glad to be here. Tickle well, to death. <laughs> you talk about a Puritan uh, Muslim immigrants. Now, who are they? Who are you referring to? Puritan Muslims are, are fundamental Muslims, Muslims who believe in a literal interpretation of the Quran. And I borrowed the term from Khalid, Abdul uh, Khalid, who says, the people who have thrown away history and who have embraced the literal interpretation and the teachings of the prophet are Puritans. Mm -hmm. They want to purify the faith. They want to purify the world, literally. And who are they and how large a group um, are they? Well, that's a good question. They're probably, uh, in the United States alone, I would say probably over 100,000 right now that would mm -hmm. characterize themselves as someone who would see suicide bombing to protect Islam as an appropriate behavior, even against civilians. So, so we've got 100,000 in, 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 in America. Least. And the reason and what why... Kind of, are they because uh, Detroit has the largest population of Muslims in the country. Would you, a lot of them be... In Dearborn. In, in, in Dearborn. Would yes. a lot of them be focused there, or is it other, other places, or are they pretty much scattered? They could be your neighbors. They could be in a suburb of Cincinnati. They could be in a rural Appalachia. Uh, they could be medical doctors. As we saw in Glasgow, Scotland, um, I went to university in Glasgow, so mm -hmm. I was really surprised to see that uh, two men, including a medical doctor a couple of years ago, drove his Jeep Cherokee into uh, Glasgow Airport Terminal with the intention of blowing it up. And of course, he was caught on fire and almost died and uh, ultimately had to go to the hospital and, and spend a lot, of, a lot of time recuperating. He was a medical doctor. So it's not necessarily a function of poverty, it's a function of ideology. And it, people don't walk around with a shirt on and says, I'm a Puritan Muslim. I mm -hmm. really believe what the Quran has to say, and I act on it. Uh, it could be someone who's poor. It could be someone who's rich. We just don't know. Who are they getting their marching orders from? Is it somewhere in the Middle East, or is it from some of these imams that are really preaching inside the United States? It is, it is an amorphous body. In other words, it, it doesn't really have a spatially divine characteristics. It's not necessarily a congregation. Mm -hmm. It's a mindset. And it could be like the individual who tried to uh, construct some uh, toy airplanes to attack some uh, strategic targets in Washington, D.C. area. Northeastern University graduate. Well, who would expect him to do that? And they say he was radicalized by watching information on the Internet. But there is a nationalistic element to this. Mm -hmm. A lot of people assume that, uh, that the Arab world is fundamentally the leading part of Islam. Not necessarily true when you consider that the world's largest Muslim country is Indonesia. And the fastest growing countries that are Muslim, by the way, they're doubling their population on average in 41 years. That's quite rapid. Pakistan, oh, Pakistan is where a lot of stuff is happening. Yemen, we know about the, uh, the drone attacks there mm -hmm. this morning that were successful. Uh, Yemen, doubling time is in 21 years, which means a very patriarchal society, a society in which women have very few choices, very few opportunities outside the role of caregiver and mother. And as a consequence, their fertility rates are extremely high. And because of that, their population is growing so fast. What about Iran? Because we've just been talking about the story of the mm -hmm. Iranian uh, Christian pastor yes. who is sentenced to death and yes. time is running out. Time is running out. Um, what is the situation in Iran in terms of the uh, Muslim population? Are they growing? We've seen the protests by the more mm -hmm. secular, modernized mm -hmm. uh, 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 yeah. population. Is that anywhere? Uh, bringing that sort of Muslim element, the Puritan element, down a little bit. Well, Shia Islam dominates uh, Iraq, Iran, as well as Iraq. And one thing to be afraid of is the possible religious-based unification of the Shia in Iraq and the Shia in Iran. That's a real serious problem there. But they are fundamentalists, but they're also connected to the Hezbollah and Hamas and the Syrian government which happens to be a sect of uh, the leaders, uh, they, they tend mm -hmm. to be a sect of the uh, Shia called Alawites. And so there is what's called a Shia crescent that runs throughout the Middle East there where the Shia dominate. But keep in mind though, the Muslim Brotherhood begat Al-Qaeda. And, uh, right. and the Hanbali tra juristic tradition in the Saudi Peninsula begat what's known as uh, Wahhabism. And again, those are, that's a juristic tradition and it's also uh, a faith 
that sees the Bible, excuse me, the Bible, the, the Gospels, and the Koran is literal. Um, I had a really great question, but not, I've just been screwed over there because what, it, what is it you look for in terms of a Puritan? Because is this different from the terrorist Muslim that the CIA and the Defense Department and all of those intelligence agencies are looking for? Well, that gets into the psychology of the individual. It depends on how willing they are to act on, on the issues that they perceive as serious. The Koran gives every indication that the person who truly believes, who does not want to suffer the, the fires of hell, mm -hmm. will do everything that they can in their power to protect Islam when there's a perception of uh, threat to Islam. But the issue is, is we don't really know, nor does he know, what constitutes a threat to Islam. And because of that, there's a lot of ambiguity. And one individual might perceive a simple verbal insult or a, a cartoon of Muhammad depicted in a Danish newspaper, or the Pope saying something about the evangelical efforts of early Islam as something that constitutes a threat to Islam. And it could cause some people to rise up and become uh, militant and radicalized. <clears throat> what, are we, what do they ultimately want? And how are they hoping to achieve it? Well, if you look at it like this, <clears throat> the second largest intergovernmental agency in the world, <clears throat> excuse me right now, is called the Organization of Islamic Conference. 57 member nations, and we have two countries in the Western Hemisphere, Suriname and uh, Guyana, which happen to belong to that organization. That could very well be a conduit for immigration into our poorest southern border for <clears throat> radicalized Islamic folk. Not necessarily, but it's a possibility because it is easier to get up through Latin America than it is you know, across the Atlantic because you have to go through LaGuardia and JFK. So that could be a real serious issue. Yeah, I've actually uh, was sent a, um, a, a link to a speech by an imam talking about that exact same thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, but this is sort of the, the global mentality, the global philosophy to sort of... And the idea is that they are having children. They are not actually uh, converting. Right. I see. Actually, we're going to have to wrap you right now, but I want to make sure that people understand the book. And I want to thank you so much, Dr. Barry Van, for being here. The book is called um, Puritan Islam, um, the Geo-Expansion of the Muslim World. Thank you very much. It's a fascinating book. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, we're going to take a break right now on uh, foxnews.com live, and we'll be back in just a moment with more Spirited Debate.